So, like I mentioned in the pull vector plane podcast, um, that particular method sometimes doesn't work. For most of the time it does, and it's a fairly easy method to do. Um, so if you're having to do it by hand, like you don't have a script or anything to set it up for you, it's pretty user friendly and easy to deal with. Um, but for those rare instances that it doesn't work, or for those of you who want to be hardcore, um, there is another method and it's a little bit more involved. There's a lot of constraints that we have to contend with. Um, I personally like this particular method because so far it has not broken on me. It applies the pull vector constraint 100% of the time without rotate values. So once you're comfortable with the method, you can script it out and then all you have to do is select your root joint and click a button and it does the setup for you. So it's very, um, very convenient, um, I'll say, to have it as a script. That way you don't have to always go through and manually do the process. But let's go ahead and dissect it manually first so we know what we're doing. First off, I am starting with clean joints this time for any of you who watch the plane podcast. So this is going to work. Um, but before I do anything, I want to go ahead and create two locators. So I'm going to go to create and locator. So I get locator one. I'm going to do command D to get locator two. Awesome. So I now have the two locators I'll be working with. I want to go ahead and group them. So I'll select locator one first and then do command G. So group one correlates with locator one and then command G on locator two. So group two corresponds with locator two. Cool. So first up, I want to move this first group to be in between my root and end joints. So I'm going to select both of those joints and then group one. I'm going to constrain, particularly with a point constraint, and I want to make sure that I am not maintaining offset. I want this group to move. So I hit apply, and there we can see that the locator has snapped to be halfway between both of those points in space. Awesome, that is what I'm looking for. So now what I want to do is select my root joint and then group one again. We're going to orient this guy through an aim constraint. We want him to aim properly. So first things first, we want to do this based on our scene. So if your world up type is not set to scene up, go ahead and switch it. So scene up is the option we're looking for. And then we want to set our aim and up vectors. So right now my locator, if I wanted, or particularly my group, if I wanted to move this guy, um, up and down, I would be moving in the Y axis. So for aim, I'm going to change my Y box to have a value of one since we are using that. And then all other boxes are supposed to be zero. So X is zero and Z is zero. Now, as far as up vector, that's based on my scene. So here where I have my little handle, I can see that Y is going up. So based on my scene, Y is also up. So I want to make sure that there is a one value inside of the Y box for up vector as well. So zero, one, zero. Cool. So we can go ahead and hit apply. And that is going to change my group, which consequently changes my locator for me. Awesome. That is what we are looking for. So now I just want to make sure that my locator itself is on the same level as my knee or elbow, whatever type of system you happen to be working with. So I'm going to select the center joint and then the locator itself. So joint and locator one. And we're going to do another point constraint. Only this time, we're not concerned with all the channels. We're only concerned with this Y axis. So that's the only one that we're going to constrain. And I'm going to hit apply. Cool. So in my particular example, I was already on the correct plane, so no movement occurred. If movement does happen, that's a good thing. Um, you're not breaking anything. We're just making sure that this particular locator lines up exactly where we need it to be. Cool. So we're done, for the most part, with group one and locator one. We're going to move on to group two. So I want this guy to be where my knee is. So I'm going to select the knee and then group two. And we're going to do another point constraint, but we're going to do all of our channels this time. 
So let's go ahead and make sure we're doing that. So when we hit apply, the group and consequently the locator snaps to that exact location in space. Awesome, that is what we're looking for. So now all we want to do is orient this particular group to match this particular locator. So locator one is going to constrain group two through an aim constraint. Now we're not maintaining offset, we want this to move. Awesome, we're still doing this based on our scene, so let's make sure that's set up right. The only thing that will really change, because ideally Y is still up inside of my scene, is the axis that we're aiming down. What axis do we want to move this locator ultimately? Well, if I want to move it away from my joint chain, then I'm going to be moving in the X axis. So instead of Y having one, I'm going to make Z have one. So it's zero, zero, 001 as far as my, my uh, particular setup is concerned. So as long as we have that set good, we can hit apply. And now both of my locators are oriented um, the same way. They're just in different spots in space. Cool. I can take locator 2 now and translate locator 2 away from my joint. So this is the position that I will be snapping my pull vector icon to. So position it wherever you want to in relation to the rig. And then we can make some icons. So I'm going to make a circle and I'm going to snap that to the end of my joint chain so I can have a foot icon. And then I'm going to duplicate that guy and snap him to my locator because that's where I want a pull vector icon. I'll make that a little bit smaller. Cool. So both of them have values and we don't like values on pretty much anything as far as setup is concerned. So let's freeze transforms. And I need an IK handle, particularly a rotate plane. And that's gonna go from the top of my leg to the end of my leg. Awesome. So I can do a parent constraint to my IK handle. So now when I select my foot icon, I'm moving my knee around or my leg system. And then we can do our pull vector constraint because that is the whole purpose of this thing. Can we put the pull vector on there without values? So holding spacebar, I'm gonna bring open my menus again and I'm going to go to pull vector. And let's check out our joints. Awesome no values. If you ever see a negative zero, it is probably that you have some scientific notation like 0 .00, 19 other zeros, and maybe a one, negative one. Um, but they are so insignificant that it does not matter. And there we can see that we are moving around. And so my joints are all zero and my system is good. So that is the um, locator method, like I said. There's a fair amount of constraints and what goes where, so it can be kind of confusing at first, but definitely give it a shot um, a couple of times, and then once you're comfortable with it, definitely, definitely script it out, so that way all you have to do is click a button and bam, you have your setup. So if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me. I love the feedback, so cheers.